Hello everyone, I'm Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, legislation to create creed goes before Parliament on Wednesday. The possibility of a bigger budget for Mass Dominic 2019. And a small company proves size does not matter when it comes to giving to the needy this Christmas. The details, coming up. Imagine. You have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. MJ Covering is the producer of Designed Galvanized and Galvalum in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length. Four styles of galvanized and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001. 275-5003 today. Legislation for the Climate Resilience Executing Agency of Dominica Creed to go before Parliament on Wednesday. Government held the last in a series of consultations on the matter in November. That event gave the public and private sector, as well as civil society stakeholders, an opportunity to review and discuss the draft Climate Resilience Executing Agency or CRED Bill 2018. The CRED Bill will allow for the establishment of the agency to empower government in its quest to make Dominica the world's first climate resilient country. The proposed bill promotes the swift and cost-effective recovery of Dominica from climate-related disasters. It also seeks to ensure that Dominica will be more resilient to natural hazards and better able to respond to climate-related disasters. The primary objects of the bill are fourfold. A. To promote the swift and cost-effective recovery of Dominica from cl climate-related disasters. B to ensure that any physical and other infrastructure damaged or destroyed during a climate-related disaster is reconstructed or restored to a state that is better than its state before the occurrence of the disaster. C, to ensure that Dominica will be more resilient to natural hazards and better able to respond to climate-related disasters. And D, to assist the public and private sectors and civil society to be better equipped to manage and recover from climate-related disasters. The Climate Resilient Execution Agency of Dominica Creed was formed to assist in rebuilding the country following the passage of Hurricane Maria in September of 2017. An increased budget is in the pipeline for Mass Dominic 2019, though an exact figure has not been disclosed. During an interview with the Channel 5 News, Acting Festivals and Events Manager with the Dominica Festivals Committee, Marvel Williams, said finalizing touches are still being put in place before presenting a budget for next year's carnival celebrations. Our budget has to reflect the new initiatives that we are looking into and that's about the practice sessions, working along with the village carnivals, you know, the New Year's gala with the Queen contestants, uh, a grander, uh, a longer time span to market that will, in, that will determine what the budget will actually be. So it's a work in progress. Uh, we, we, as always, we have the commitment of the government of Dominica and, and that is important in what the final figures will look like. So it is a work in progress. However, we have started the preparations for the national parade and official opening. During a ceremony to sash the five Queen contestants, Williams disclosed that moves are being made to have a designated carnival city next year to host the majority of shows. It's hopeful that we will be able to bring back a staple carnival city. I'm working towards it. As a matter of fact, we are going to have a staple carnival city where 90% if not more of our activities will be taking place and that will start with the opening parade. It's going to be treated as an investment by the government in 
what other people are already doing because we do not fully sponsor a lot of the activities that take place during carnival so that will be our way of contributing back to the local event organizers who are part of making the carnival big Williams says discussions with various stakeholders has been instrumental in introducing new elements to the almost complete 2019 carnival calendar. For me, it's about making Dominica's carnival more inclusive. It's about engaging the stakeholders. The stakeholders, you know, the costume bands, the traditional uh, people, they are the ones who actually make up what it is we offer for carnival. So that's where I started. I started uh, with my team in terms of communication. I was like, let's not just put out a calendar of events out there. Let's speak to the people. What exactly it is that you've seen with the carnival that needs fixing? You know, what suggestions do you have for fixing? How do you think we can make Dominica's Carnival grander? And we did get those suggestions, so we are working on it. Uh, we are making it more inclusive. I think having one Carnival City where most of the activities will take place is ideal. Well, we are looking at the stadium for court showing our support to all the event organizers, whether it is advertising on our social media handles, advertising on our website, inviting them to our press conferences, giving them some form of cash contribution, all these uh, additional perks we know that will make the carnival better in 2019. Carnival celebrations run from 12th January to 6th March 2019. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. A lot has been said about the settlement community in Belleville Chopin where 38 residents now have ownership of new homes. But the community would not be complete without a number of other critical services including health and commercial facilities. Prime Minister Skerritt says government has built more than just homes, it has built a community. So we have a health centre here, a brand new health centre reconstructed with nurses quarters, a basketball court, a playground for the children, a brand new playing field, a market for the sale of fresh produce, agricultural produce, and a massive commercial plaza where the barber and the coiffeurs, you know, the hairstylists, the little supermarket, all can have the businesses and take advantage of the economy and opportunities here. Mr. Skerritt has also shared an aspect of the story behind the new settlement which many in the public had not heard until the handing over ceremony. I want also to place on public record the government's appreciation and thanks to the developer, Dr. Anthony Hayden, who is the CEO of MMC for his great partnership. Many of you will not have met him, but this is a gentleman who came to us just at the dawn of Tropical Storm Eric and said he could partner with us to create a housing program in our country. And in respect to this project, which is financed entirely by the Citizenship by Investment Program, that developer front loaded the resources to start this project. He assisted us in paying for the lands, and he signed contracts and started work, and we did not pay him one dollar, not until after about 10 months after the project started. And the staff of AMC, Mr. Timmins, exceptional project manager, exceptional project manager, who has developed a very good relationship with the government and the various departments of government. I want to say thanks to you, Mr. Timmins. Flo Dominica and the Public Service Union making progress on salary matters affecting some of the company's staff. A meeting previously planned for Wednesday of this week between the Public Service Union, Flo Dominica and the Labour Commissioner took place instead on Tuesday. Channel 5 News is not aware of the reason for advancing the meeting. But this meeting stems out of a development last Wednesday where the concerns of retail shop employees and technical staff were raised. The DPSU's position is that employees who are part of the bargaining unit should not be offered labour contracts. 
The union says employees who previously worked at the retail shop when it was outsourced years ago were part of the bargaining unit and therefore should not have been offered labor contracts. The union says salary increases, which the staff would have received as part of the bargaining unit, was due to have been paid in January 2018. Technical staff were reportedly dealing with similar issues as they, according to the DPSU, were also issued individual contracts. The DPSU is against employees being offered individual contracts which do not take into account benefits which would be included in the collective bargaining agreement. Channel 5 News understands the PSU is expected to release a statement on this development on Wednesday. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. Stay connected and share your favorite holiday moments with Flow. Get the Alcatel A1 for $199 when you activate an extra-large prepaid combo plan or the Samsung J4 for just $399 with a large postpay plan and get free talk evenings and weekends. Plus, get free WhatsApp on large and extra-large prepaid combo plans and sign up for any new service for a chance to win cash or hampers every week. So make it Flow for everything mobile this Christmas. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. The Dominica Infirmary has been gifted with $1,000 by a small business enterprise. Spa de Celis, which specializes in therapeutic treatment and massages, has partnered with the infirmary to provide its service to the residents and staff. Board Director Thomas Holmes says the money will go a long way towards the care given to infirmary residents. We are very thankful at the Dominica Infirmary. And as I said, you look around and you can see what is being done. And when, when we get contributions like this, it just says we increase the service that we give to our elderly who have done so much, as Honorable Minister for Education said, they have contributed to the development of Dominica. So we're just giving back. So this money we have received, Mr. Moore, is going to go a long way in helping us um, in our development here of our elderly. Meantime, four awards were distributed to those who've made and continue to make meaningful contributions to the infirmary, namely Arnold Williams, Jay's Bookstore, Dominica Government Band, and the St. Patrick's Parish of the Catholic Church. At Monday's ceremony, two centenarians at the infirmary were recognized in the individuals of Franzilla Lander, who is 106 years old, and Mami Gasper, who is 101. The award ceremony was held under the theme cherishing our elderly in their golden years. An exhibition of art and craft items created by Dekia participants and some residents also featured at Monday's ceremony. A challenge has been issued to the public and private sector to take better care of the elderly. Minister for Education Peter Serja was speaking on behalf of the Minister for Social Services at the Dominica Infirmary's Residence Awareness Week Awards Ceremony. Serja commended the various institutions which already care for the country's aged citizens, but says more individuals need to come on board to do so. I cannot overemphasize the fact that there are some institutions who stand as a tower in our country, having worked with the elderly citizens. And I speak here of institutions like the Roman Catholic Church, and I commend them for the work that they have been doing with our senior citizens. And I wish, as I close, to call on other institutions, organizations, and faith-based institutions and organizations more so to join in the vanguard of ensuring that our seniors, the private sector, assist in ensuring that our senior citizens enjoy the few years that they have left here on earth and that we pave, we craft a way for those of us who are gracefully getting there. 
The minister noted senior citizens have made a significant contribution towards national development and need to be recognized for such. He says government has taken several policy decisions to ensure the country's elderly are well taken care of. The government of Dominica by policy decision has ensured that every home, including the infirmary, receives an annual subvention to assist in their operations. In addition to that, by policy decision, we have ensured that every elderly citizen 70 years and above who does not have the financial means is provided for with $300 a month. And in fact, you heard the Prime Minister during his independence address spoke to a top up of $200 this Christmas. In addition to that, I believe one of the most important facilities that we have put in place as government is the Yes We Care. Mr. Serja also implored family and friends of the aged citizens to be more compassionate towards them. And charitable organizations received $12,000 in donations from the Dominica Social Security on Tuesday. Among the recipients, Calls, Chances, Dominica Association of People with Disabilities, Dominica Infirmary, Education Trust Fund, the Grotto Home for the Homeless, and the House of Hope. Maho Senior Citizens Home, the Northern District Home for the Aged, St. Jerome's Ministry, and the Social Center also received donations. Let me, on behalf of Chances, say thanks very much to Dominica Social Security for recognizing children and young persons. Many times we hear about so much, but children, we kind of hear the negative a lot. But a lot of the children at Chances are not their fruit, their own fault. But sometimes, what have we not done? You know, and that is the reason why there are chances. So I must say thanks to the Dominica Social Security. Over the years, every year, without fail, we have received that assistance from you. It's Christmas time, you know they're looking forward to a lot, and so we appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. The Dominica Infirmary is very much um, in tune with all the good wishes coming from the Dominica Social Security and it's been happening for years and we never got the, um, the time that we could call the Dominica Social Security not just for donations but for assistance in explaining things and so on. So we're very close to the Dominica Social Security and then we thank them for all the contribution and all the um, what should I say, all the information that they have been given, been given to us. Just last week, we um, recognized our residents at the Dominican Infirmary through what we call Residence Awareness Week. And then yesterday, we had a function where we award um, or really recognize our um, workers, our management, and so on. And today, it is timely that we receive this donation and then just let me say to the Dominica Social Security, last year and before, this donation went a long way. And then this year, believe me, it will be going through a long way. The, the government has been providing subvention for the Dominica Infirmary. If it wasn't for the government, we would not be alive as we are today. And definitely, if it is not for the Dominica Social Security and others to continue to contribute, and even though the representative the chair this morning said that the donation may not be that big but we thank god for it dominica social security of course has contributed significantly to to this uh, observations because this year being our 35th year of existence called for a number of outlays that we would not normally do during any year. So I'm sure that members of my association will be very appreciative of that contribution. Let me note, most importantly, that over the years, um, the contribution that is being made to the association has represented approximately 40% 
of our own contributions to the Dominica Social Security, effectively telling us that the Dominica Social Security is giving us a, a huge discount on our contributions. <laughs> but this is not all. We have, in fact, benefited over the years. And I listened very attentively to the chairman of the Dominica Social Security, and I want to point out two things. One, disability is not an illness. Uh, you, one with a disability may acquire an illness, but being disabled or living with a disability does not mean that you are ill. Get ready to open the best gifts with Flow this Christmas. Sign up for a new broadband or TV service with free installation. Or sign up for a broadband and TV bundle and get 40% off broadband for the first two months. Plus, get a chance to win a 55-inch smart TV, one year or six months of free service. Enjoy big-time entertainment and big speeds this Christmas with Flow. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fenced pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. The legislation to create creed goes before Parliament on Wednesday. The possibility of a bigger budget for Mass Dominic 2019. And a small company proves size does not matter when it comes to giving to the needy this Christmas. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.